Hi everyone, welcome to Diversity in Yachting on Yachting International Radio. I'm your host, Stimmy, and today we are joined by Graziella. Is that how you say your name? Graziella? Yeah, perfect. Graziella <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> how are you guys? Thank you for calling me, eh? Yay. Thank you for the invite. So, you are from Brazil. Why don't you yes, let us know? Where in Brazil are you from? Firstly, let's start there. Yeah, so basically I'm from Brazil. I'm from Santos. Nobody knows where Santo is until I say Neymar. So Neymar, the city of Neymar. <laughs> this is my city. So everyone knows Ooh. now. <laughs> now we know. <laughs> yeah. Neymar the hottie. <laughs> and um, yeah. was, is, is, it, is yachting known in your, in your city? Or is it something that's popular? No, okay. no, 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 no. In my city, we have the biggest port in the Latin America. Okay. And it's only know about, about the cruise lines. So we do have like a very, very long season, summer season with cruise lines, yes. but not yachting. Yachting in Brazil, I guess, is going to be a li- like a not so many, like here in Europe or in Caribbean or the US. But yes. we do have some yachting there, but it's just like a, near to Rio de Janeiro, and maybe south of Brazil, if I'm not mistaken, like a, the big, biggest yacht, maybe it's going to be in Angra dos Reis, that is in Rio, I guess. Oh, wow. Okay. And so you do have cruise line experience. It, like, tell me when you started it and how long you've been in the industry for. Yeah. So I started uh, almost 10 years ago in 2011. And uh, I started, I decided to start because... I saw that was the only opportunity for me to learn language, that it was my goal. And also to travel the world, you know? And I started as photographer because I didn't have any experience. Okay. Like, um, and not even English. So it was very, very hard for me to start because I did all by myself. I didn't even mention to my parents that I'm going to do this. So it was just like a surprise. Hi, bye. I'm going. Bye. (laughs) Like this. So they were very shocked and also because I'm the only, only child. So it was a little bit hard for them, but well, this is my dream. So they understood now. And I start as photographer because in the beginning I didn't want to start like a housekeeping and you know, like even bar, I tried bar, but as well, I didn't like, so I started as photographer. I did two contracts. And then while I was doing as photographer, I saw, I realized that this was actually not my area that I really like to do. And I got in love by guest relations, guest services, hospitality, custom service. So I applied and I changed to the other cruise line. So I start jumping for cruise line to cruise line. Of course, always, you know, changing the level of the cruise lines. And I end up in the six stars cruise line that actually they call uh they sell the product as mega yacht but of course it's not a mega yacht it's not a mega yacht it's like a cruise line but the the size it looks like a very uh, like a yacht okay but it's a cruise line with 200 guests so this was my last experience now in 2020 i am and i think i end up my contract in february yeah end of february before covid starts Oh yeah, before the craziness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what what made you make the decision to do the transition into yachting? I do have a very good friend that also was my roommate on cruise lines. Yeah. And her name is Marielle Suzin, and yeah. she is now um, ship stew. Oh wow. She she she's working as well for a long 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 time. I think more than five years on yachting. Every single time she mentioned to me, you should change to yachting. And every time I was refusing, I said no 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 no. So after with all this drama with COVID and everything, I had a lot of time to think about it, and I decided, okay, maybe now is the time. You know, like uh, now I'm ready to change because also it's a very hard situation, and all the cruise lines are. are they are not operating at all so i say okay maybe i should try yes and and i decided to change do you feel that your cruise line experience helped you land your first job and how long did firstly how long did it take you to land the job let's just let's start there <laughs> Even yeah craziness. so when i started to to try the to change to 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 jump to yachting 
I was in Brazil, so I was stuck there in Brazil. Nobody can go out, nobody can come in. And this was a, more or less, a, a, I guess, in March. So the first idea that I had, create an Instagram account just for yachting. So yeah. basically I create my Instagram account and I present myself. I just start say, like every single post I was count, uh, saying something about my history and about my like experience and everything. Yeah. And this actually helped me a lot because I start adding a lot of people on yachting. I discover a lot of people, even you. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Yeah, so I get I like I try just try to make a, like a, a kind of like network, you know, like even yeah. being like a, in the other part of the planet. Yeah. But actually, this it was very uh, helpful for me. Yeah. And then around August, I just freak out and I realized that the only because before, of course, the no no countries were accepting here in Europe accepting Brazilians to come, even tourists, oh, normal yeah. tourists. Oh, yeah. So I had, I had also this drama and I realized after like a, maybe one month of around August that I was able to go by Croatia, entering Croatia. So I just decided to buy a flight ticket. Like it was on Friday and I was flying on Monday, like a very crazy. I, I, I swear for you, I did this. And then I told my mom, I told my dad, I said, listen, this is the only way for me to find a job yeah. It's to be in Europe because it's going to be easy. Because if I'm there, okay, it's fine. Exactly. I just can fly around, take a train, whatever, but I can go. And then they, they say, okay, just go. And then I came here in Europe. Was everything okay? So while I, wa I was planning actually to be in Croatia around 15 days at least. Yeah. And then I had my plan B. Of course, if I didn't find any job while in Croatia, I was jumping to Italy here. because And then I will be in where I am now, near to Genova. Okay. And in Croatia, I was applying like a crazy every single morning and afternoon, applying, 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 applying. Yeah. Yeah. And I was very, 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 very lucky to find a job in 10 days in while 10 I was there. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. It was very, very lucky. I basically I just post like a normal people do it in Facebook groups. Yeah. I just post like a resume. I put a nice photo and yeah. a very, very nice captain that I'm very grateful. Uh, my captain called me and he liked me. So he just told me, okay, when you can join, I say, well, when do you need me? And then I, I flew to, to frames and then I start. So you got the job through the, through the series that this, through the, yeah, through the series that you sent out. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's amazing. Yeah, oh yeah that's very, that's very nice. That's crazy. Um, and then like, how long do you see yourself in yachting? Like, what are your future goals? And um, do you see yourself as a chief shoe? Like, how long are you planning to do it? Are you kind of just freelancing it? Like, what's the vibe? No. <laughs> so basically, when uh, Captain offered me this this position, he offered me as temporary okay. because, of course, he understand that I didn't have like enough experience on yachting, but he knew that I knew I have a lot of experience in hospitality. Exactly. And and then he told me, okay, I really prefer to take someone that is green and I like this, I can teach you how it works here and on our boat. And then actually this is what happened. So I came there, they were very nice, all crew, very, very nice. They teach me everything. They were very patient. Captain was every single time asking me like, how are you? Everything's fine. And, you know, very concerned and, uh, about, about my situation because of course when I joined, I was very quiet like this, just observing like, okay, okay, okay. And yeah. then after that, our first boss trip, I realized what is yachting. <laughs> Basically, this is the answer. I, I realized what is yachting. So I was like, I'm working, yes, just running like a chicken every single time, everywhere, you know, like a nonstop. But it was so nice. And also, I'm very lucky with my bosses that were, they are very, very nice people. So it's good. And now, actually, talking about what you, you, you ask, my plan is to continue because the captain promotes, he, he wants me to next season. So oh, next wow. season, I will be there. Yeah, I got the job. 
So next season I will start probably in February or March, depending on the situation. Yeah. And of course I want to improve every single time and I can, you know, like I improve, improve, improve. And who knows, maybe one day I will become Chief Stew. Who knows? I think I can, it can happen. Yes, of course it can. I think so. Of course, <laughs> yeah. of course it can. So um, what was interesting about your Instagram is that you speak so many languages. And mm -hmm. that is amazing. Now, you know, did you ever feel, I don't, I don't know how your crew, like what nationalities were on board, um, but do you ever feel that English is sometimes a difficult kind of makes you insecure sometimes or um how can i put this um that you you may not be natively english speaking and when you're working in an english environment does that make you a little bit nervous from time to time definitely the answer is yes definitely okay. and this actually is, doesn't happen only with english for me it happens with all the language that i speak because i never did any classes i never studied all the language i learned by myself that's, that's the point. <laughs> that's the point. So that's why I never trust on my English or on my Italian or even on my Spanish. But one point of the life, you know, I just give up. I say, okay, you know, like everybody make mistakes. So for me, it's normal. Everybody will understand. If I'm able to communicate, even if I'm speaking wrong, you if they understand, that. it's fine. I'm, I'm good. No, it's true. It's true. And I mean, yeah. you speak pretty well. I think there's, there's no better way than to learn it by just speaking. So yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I can hear you perfectly. <laughs> yeah. No, in the beginning I was very, very quiet. You know, every time I was like afraid to talk. But yeah, once yeah. that I started actually working on a uh, cruise line that is, is American, yeah. I just say, okay, everybody, if the, if these people that actually is native, they speak like like a broken English, let's say, why should I be afraid? You know, of my English. So it's fine now. Yes. And it's true, no one should really be afraid because, you know, people feel that language is sometimes can create discrimination. But I feel that if you just, just communicate, like don't ever let it be something that should hold you back from anything. Like you'll get no. better and better as you speak and then you have to get better and better. Like there's no way you won't. Um, so it's good that you just were sort of like, you know what, I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just talking. And that is, this is the way that I would talk, you know, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I'm like that. <laughs> and when you were on the cruise liners, did you work with a mixed bunch of nationalities, people from different cultures? Like, um, I don't know which specific cruise liners you were on, but what was the, yeah, how, how were the people? Well, I started working like a, like a, in very very big cruise ships mm -hmm. with like a three thousand four thousand even five thousand guests guests no crew and crew more or less let's say two thousand if i'm not mistaken more or less and then my last ship was only 200 crew yes but actually the nationalities is every time, every time mix. It's like a everywhere, people from everywhere. Yeah, yeah, from South Africa, from Brazil, from Philippines, India. Doesn't yeah. matter. It's like a mix, a mix, mix, mix. Yes. And with that mix, did you ever feel there was some type of dynamics? Like how, how did people deal with the cultural differences? Well, I work as a... <laughs> yeah. Yes, I, I work for one cruise line that I'm not, of course, not mentioning which one. Yeah. But I felt some discrimination between nationalities. Okay. Because, of course, we do have the crew mess, the officer mess, and the staff mess for yes. staff, crew, and officer. Yes. And basically, they put some nationalities only to eat in the crew mess. And not even if you will have like a stripes or whatever, even a high, high uh, position, they do this. So this cruise line, actually, I work like a for only one one contract, and that's it because I I don't work with this kind of environmental, you know, the situation. No, that's not for me. Easy. It's yeah. yeah, it's very it's very very sad. Uh, but normally, even the other com the the last one was amazing because there was only one crew mess, so everybody eats there, even the captain, even the captain. So every single time, captain, staff, captain, securities, everybody together. Amazing. So 
This is good. Yeah. This yeah. is very nice. But then with the segregation of the crew messes and people being put in um in certain like certain nationalities and certain messes, what if I decided that I was just gonna get up and grab my plate of food and move to the other crew mess? Like what would happen? If you are allowed to do it, nothing's gonna happen because of course if you like for example, I was officer, so I can use the boat the three the three of the three crew mess so i can go i can i can just use whatever i want okay. but for example for a crew member normal crew member normal normally filipino or indian these kind of nationalities uh they are not allowed to come in hours so if they go probably they receive a warning and then you know with three warnings normally you just go dismissed so it's very so there wasn't a lot of Filipinos and that nationality that was in those higher positions as per se. So I'm guessing an officer would be a higher position on the cruise liner. Yeah, there, there were some. There were some some Filipinos, some Indians. Of course, they they okay. do they do go like a, for a higher position. Okay. But good. most of them, they just are not allowed at all to go there. So this is actually very sad. I don't even like to be talking about because it, I get memories, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's sad, but it's good. It's good that, you know, um, that like, you know, people know because I mean, that's just, I couldn't imagine. I'm so radical. Like if that was me, I would just sit on <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's good that there's other cruise liners that you said like that last one that you were on that had one mess and everyone was eating and say I, I love that it's like an open office plan yes everyone's equal yes and um, so it does show that you know it's not every single cruise liner no 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 I, it just happened with one and i work at four six so yeah it's it was only one yeah that's amazing that is really good no that's good um yeah. wow and what what was the language that was most spoken on the cruise liners that you worked on i worked for two uh companies italian companies okay. so in italian company they say that english is mandatory but actually no it's italian <laughs> everyone speaks italian with you even sometimes on the meetings they do like like they they prefer italian and i understand yeah. I understand Italian very well, so I know, I know how they feel. Yeah, so exactly. Most of them, they, they, they were Italian. But of course, in the other one, it's only English, only every time English, and that's it. And also, when I work in Puma Tour as well, in Spanish. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. So you've just, been, you've just been years and years and years and years and years. <laughs> yeah. That is amazing. Um, so how would you say your first experience, um, of yachting has been, even though you did say that you started at the end of the season? Yes. And it's, yes. Um, how, how, how was it? Like, how do you feel now having done it? I can describe that it was like amazing, amazing opportunity, um, experience, because I just, I, I feel, that I have the feeling that I just joined the boat in the right timing because yeah. it was the end of the season. So I had enough time to learn how to clean the cabins, how to make the cabins, how to do everything. I had time to know the boat. I have time to prepare inventories. I have time to everything, to all, to everything, you know, like even now, if I go there, Captain will ask me like, what is this? What is this? Like, we know now, like I know everywhere, everything actually in the boat, in the boat. So this is very nice because I had enough time. And also I'm very, very lucky for my captain because he's amazing. He's an amazing person. And like, he was so concerned about the situation because I told him I, I was very, very afraid about service. I was freaking out. Like I, I said, I told him like, I never did. I never did. So I'm very, very afraid. I'm shaking. Even if I start thinking, you know, so before the, bo the boss arrived on the, on the trip, he made like a crew dinner for them. And we, we make like a trial, tri trial dinner because also the chef was new. And the two stews as well, Neil, me and the other girl. So we did like a trial and everything was good. So no problem. 
that's nice to hear. Like, uh, you know, there's lots of great captains. So, you know, that's yeah. really, really nice to hear that you experience. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was feeling so welcome, you know, like a for, to have like a captain yes. concern about like a, how you're going to do, how you're going to be and everything it was so nice. Yes. It was very nice. It's good. It's good because, I mean, you do hear horror stories, but I think what you, like, people need to realize there's also so many great captains. I've heard such incredible stories. Yes. It's really amazing to hear that. And that's what's beautiful about yeah. the industry. Um, yeah. So, is there any advice that you could give someone um, that wants to come into the industry, especially coming from cruise liners? Um, do you think they should make that transition? Anyone that's questioning if they need to come into yachting like it took you so long? <laughs> well, I think that they, if they want to change, just do it. Just like, a, of course, it, it, all beginnings are very hard. And most of the people, even I heard some mysteries about like, oh, like a, normally people from yachting don't like people from cruise lines. And, and sometimes I see this in some posts on Facebook, okay? Eh? Really? I do see, yeah. But like, a, like I mentioned, when I post, when I did my, my I, when I was applying on Facebook. Yes on the Facebook groups, I never had any problem, like any, like a negative comment or whatever. Everybody was so nice. And even on Instagram, since that I create my account, everybody was so helpful. Every single post that I post, my God, I even mentioned to my mom, I told her like in cruise line, nobody's like this. Everybody's trying, you know, like to, yes. to, you know, to be mean with people, but on Yachting, like everybody looks like so nice with everyone. It's so, it's so amazing, eh? Amazing. I was so impressed with this because everybody is welcome, you know, like even the one girl from the um, uh, below deck, yes. she's so nice. She started following me and everything and she yes. replied like a normal person. So this is so nice. It's yes. very nice. Yes. It's very kind. And even if you need like any help, even I, ha I have also a, a very, very good help with one, another girl in the, on the Instagram. Yes. She created my CV. So I'm so grateful as well for her because she created my CV. And after that, I started applying. I came to Europe and then I got the job. So it's like a, it's like a, a, a mix, you know, it's like a connection. Like a networking is amazing on yachting. So this it, is so it, nice. It is. it is. And that's the thing. I think for anyone that's really wanting to get into it, especially during this time, um, and maybe even next year, I think social media is extremely powerful. You know, I, yes, I have social media management experience. So for me, that's my skill. So just kind of find how you can use social media to best promote yourself. And exactly. There's a massive community there. And it's probably the best way to network because dock walking can, it doesn't work for everybody. Some people get jobs, yeah. some people don't. So you yeah. really just need to open up your network base and you will definitely find something somehow yeah. or a new friend. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> you just don't know what's going to happen. That's amazing. Oh my yes. gosh. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you so much for calling me in. To invite him is such a pleasure. Me, I'll, not not. I'm now. I'm not green anymore. So before I was like, oh, no, because I'm green, la, 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 but now I'm not green. So thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm still green, but it's fine. <laughs> no, don't don't give up. Hey, eh? look my history. Eh? Don't give up. No, I will never trust me. I didn't come this far to give up. <laughs> yeah but it's like i told you like in the beginning it's so complicated but if you make like you put a goal and then you just go like focus you can do it like an instagram was so amazing this idea that i had like just to put every all the ideas together all my experience together and keep posting 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 yeah. posting posting yeah. like even about like uh doing cocktails or even like uh, doing like a how to use swing machine this kind of things yeah. it's amazing like you just post and people know that what you do and even if you put your instagram account on your cv people it's going to check yes definitely so it's it, it's nice yeah that's actually a very good point is um is that obviously create a professional instagram page and put it on your cv um maybe not so much a personal page but your professional page i think would be really the professional good. yes yeah you know um definitely so true i just see a little sewing I also sew, so 
<laughs> we both have that in common. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, thank you everyone for watching Diverse Team Yachting. Thank you, Graziella. Graziella. Thank you. Yeah, it's okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> From Neymar's town. Oh my gosh. <laughs> It's fine. Your pronounce is fantastic. It's fantastic <laughs> because no, normally people don't, they can't say my name. They okay. can't. But every time I just say like, pretend that you speak Italian, just do it. Graziella. That's it. Graziella. Oh, that's true. Graziella. Yeah. <laughs> I can't say my surname. So we are the... We are in the same page. It's fine. I <laughs> know. <laughs> 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 Anyway, thank you so much for coming. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you. I will see you next week, Thursday, for another interview. Bye.